Namaste. Peace and blessings, family. Magic Lepar here, coming back. To discuss uh, today's topic, and I felt like there was a, a really good need for this particular topic, and that is two topics, actually. Lusting for results, and also the day of the dead, slash Solomon, slash Halloween. So, let me start off by saying, I'm wearing white today. Today is Friday. Today is the day of Venus. And, you know, in a crooked, wicked, and decrepit world that we live in, the need to align ourselves with love energy is paramount, in my humble opinion. Uh, so, you can wear white, you can wear uh, green, which symbolizes, which is the color of your heart chakra, to align yourself with the love energies on this Friday. Invoke Urzu, you can invoke Diana, Aphrodite, Oshun, Hetheru, Pamajira, La Serene, any of the love deities uh, are best invoked on this day. Because it's like I said, this is the day of Venus. And uh, this is their day. The love goddess is there. Let me also remind you that we are in Mercury retrograde. And uh, for someone like myself, whose ruling planet is Mercury, it affects me every single time. But I'm aware of it so I can deal with it better, but it does not, you know make it make it not affect me it still affects me but I'm aware of it so I do things like heavy meditation a lot of reading a lot of self reflecting today's the perfect day like I said to align your heart chakras with the love deities the love goddesses so you can burn white candles green candles pink candles you know, to align yourself with those energies especially during the Mercury retrograde, and it's a fall equinox that just happened two days ago, on September 23rd, it started. Uh, mind you, the Pope came. Not that I care, but you gotta understand these are rituals. These are mass rituals that these people do constantly. They do it on certain days. Don't wanna get off into that topic. My topic for today is lusting for results. Nothing is more disconcerting to an occultist to have someone come to him and act like an eager student and then you find out down the line all they want is a quick fix. And I'm finding that most people who are coming to me lately, they're doing this. They may read a, a book or two, follow some instruction, do a spell. Once they don't get the results they desire in a certain time frame, then people are just like fading away. They'll go to another resource. Then they'll go to another resource. And then the one thing that you're not doing is taking, you're not being consistent when you're doing that. You're going to multiple people trying to get a similar result. Or because the first person didn't give you a good answer, you go to another person. That's, that's got to be the most inane thing that I've ever heard of. But people are doing it because in this age of technology, and, and I want it now, nobody is willing to put in work. It's like, it's like going to school to become a scientist, or a doctor, or a high, just put a high science, and you fail a test, and you drop out of school. It's the exact same principle. You can't, nothing's more insulting to an occultist who's put in years of work, reading, research, and experimentation for someone to come along and expect a, a, a result right away. You have to fine tune things, you have to tweak things. 
You have to experiment constantly. You can't just do one spell, it doesn't work within a certain time frame, and then you give up and say, oh, it doesn't work. That's, that's totally not true. The reason I'm saying this is because I'm finding people, people who don't want to let go of other people are an issue. They have a problem with themselves. And most of the requests that I get and other cultures that I know are love spells. I've said this on several videos. You can't make somebody love you. If someone wants to move on from you, you need to look in the mirror and say, okay, maybe I should move on too. I've spoken about this several times, but it seems like people are not getting the fucking point. <clears throat> you can't... Alright, so that brings me to my topic. Lusting for results. A lot of people that I know, and occultists that I know that who have clients, they say these same things that I'm about to tell you. When you, when you are sitting there and you are constantly thinking is this going to work is this going to work is this going to work you're lusting for results and that's not a good thing for one thing your mind your subconscious mind is very very powerful you know i know it may seem like a hard thing to do but you can do it you cannot lust for results once you do a spell the best thing that you can do after that spell Go do something else. Go smoke a cigarette. Go eat some meat. Go ground yourself. Go play a game. Go watch TV. Go talk to somebody boring. But take your mind off of the work. You have to let the magic work. You can't just constantly, if I think about it, think about it, think about it, then maybe it'll happen quicker. No, it's not gonna happen quicker. What you're gonna do you're going to invoke the law of reverse and the exact opposite will happen to you. I had someone do a love spell and what happened was it was this, this person who, no, no, it was him. I'm sorry, it was, a, it was a guy. He wanted this female so bad, but she had found out that he cheated on her. So she, she left him alone. He wanted her back, of course. And then he decided to do some spell work on her. I always warn people, this may bring a person back to you, but totally not the way you want. They may be totally different. I guess a lot of occultists and grimoires, they're not going to tell you this. Because why? They have to make money. But... I'm not here about money, I'm, I'm here because I believe we as people, us melanin people, we need to know the truth about this. So anyway, back to this story, <clears throat> he decided to do some spell work on him, and he used his sexual fluids, but like I said, I think in my basic candle magic 101 I mentioned this, the sexual fluids. Using that on spell work is one of the most powerful things that you can do. He did some spell work on her. He wrote her, her name on a candle. I believe it was a red candle that he wanted. Because he wanted her, her back for sex. He wrote her name on a candle. He masturbated. He put her name in a jar. He put all these things. He did a, a pretty decent spell work when he told me about it. I'm like, okay. You know, that, that sounds good, she, you know, you may see some results. Here's the thing that happened. Within three days of him doing this work, he started calling her. I'm like, why don't you start calling her? I, well, I mean, because I want to, you know, talk to her. He won't, she won't even pick up the phone, blah, blah, blah. Once the full story came out, he was kind of, this was kind of, it was obsessing him about this working because he wanted it to work so badly. What he did was the complete opposite. I think she actually went so far as to change her number. You see how that works? 
I know it, it may sound strange or whatever, but that's what happens. Your mind is more powerful than you think it is. So when you do spell work, remember I said three to 21 days is what you should be looking for as far as results. If you want as far as more results, do it during the full moon. While the moon is waxing, until it becomes full. Do it during that time. Especially if you're just starting out. It will be wise to follow the phases of the moon. Someone asked me that question recently. That's why I threw that in. Okay, but I believe also when, when me and him spoke, he said that he did it during, I think, a, wa a waning moon. Which is, will take things away from you. It clears things away. You see how that works? Okay. Patience goes a long way. You have to be patient. If you are not willing to... if Okay. Let me put it this way. If you're not willing to be patient and wait for results and experiment and write down things, record things, and see what works, see what didn't work, if you're not willing to do any of this, this is not the field for you. Just going to be straight up blunt and honest about it. This, you may not want to do this. But I will say from years of being into the cult, it's totally worth it to be able to control your life. To be, it's just like I said, the examples I gave earlier, scientists, doctors, lawyers, they go to school for years to perfect their craft. This is no different. You're not going to be having quick fixes by doing it. You're not going to have a fucked up life for 15 years and then decide, oh, I'm going to do magic and in a month I'm going to fix everything that I did wrong and everything that happened wrong for me for the past 15 years and in a month all that's going to be fixed. No. Because the reason is you're going to have to do several spells in order to fix things that happen for years. It's not going to be an overnight fix. I said that for a reason because I've had people come to me and say, oh, I've done this for years, oh, I've done this, I've done that, uh, you know. And then what these people don't, what these people do, if they don't get the results that they want, They'll go to an occultist to try and fix it. And then the occultist will analyze this and say, look, I'm going to charge you $500 on up to $1,000 because it's going to take that much work. People are not understanding this principle. Why do you think lawyers pay, uh, charge you so much? Why do doctors charge so much? They have a highly specialized craft that they spent money, they spent years learning, studying, and researching, and experimenting, and failing over and over again. The master has failed more times than the beginner has ever, ever tried. Hopefully, that puts the, that into perspective. So, one of the mis most disconcerting things that I said earlier is that you know, people come to me acting like they want to be into the occult, they want to, they're ready, and they, they, they want to get into this art, but not willing to do anything. You can't read one or two books and claim and, and, and think you're going to master this art. It's an art to it. The ancient peoples, the ancient indigenous people spent years learning this. The ancient mystery systems. It took years for those students to graduate. The Library of Alexandria had so many books in it, they burned all those books and it took months for those books to burn. That's how many books it took. To I mean, I think it took longer than six months, if I have my memory serves me correctly, but it takes a while to learn this art. And if you're not willing to do that, then you might as well keep paying someone else to do the work for you. You might as well. It's just a sad fact. The universe will move things out of the way for you. 
That's why some things take longer than others. <clears throat> if you want something done and it seems like obstacles are in the way, the universe will first move those obstacles out of the way so that what you ask for can be granted. So I'm finding that magic is occultism. It is a fad for most people. They get interested for a little short while and then they're bored of it. Nothing can be more insulting to someone like myself or the masters than to, to see that happen. Because first of all, these are ancient sciences and you should be learning them anyway. And then second of all, it's just like, okay, this is a fad for a while. Okay, I'm going to move to something else. We are so more concerned on ratchet, so-called reality TV, than we are learning about who we are spiritually. You got the melanin in your skin, so the magic is already embedded in your DNA. I'll say it again, the magic is already embedded in your DNA. Why do they suppress it? Why do they demonize it? There's a reason for that. So, yeah, <laughs> hopefully um, this helps some people. Uh, I think I just, you may see it as a vent, but I'm just saying, I'm just saying it way too much for it to be some kind of coincidence that people are so, so discombobulated about things and the food we eat, not drinking enough water, not eating enough fruits and vegetables. These are, all these things contribute to the way we are as a people in, in our current mind state. It's very, it, it's sad to see. Magic and occultism will bring you back to your divine spiritual self. You will start to see things for what they are. Your intuition will grow. ES ESP will grow, excuse me. Which is why I said, learning this ancient spiritual sciences is totally worth it. My favorite hop, my favorite hop, so-called Halloween is coming up, so I want to speak briefly on that, and that is Halloween, aka Sawin. Also, the, the the Day of the Dead, October thirty-first. The best, the not the best, but the best time, I should say, to connect with your ancestors and ask them to guide you is on October thirty-first, Halloween, Sawin. S A H M A I N. Sawin. This is a Mexican day to day. It is not what you think it is. It is not honoring goblins and spooks and ghosts. Nothing about that. This is about your ancestors that have passed before you. Man, that's what the Day of the Dead is all about. It's honoring and respecting and revering your ancestors. It has nothing to do with what Hollywood has made. It's a very spiritual time to connect with your ancestors. All you have to do is set up an altar. Set up an altar with some fruits and some bread and some wine and some rum. To connect with your ancestors and just sit in there and talk to them. That goes a long way with them. Burn some hell notes to them. They can use stuff on the other side as well. I'll go into that another time. Um, and the reason, the reason that this is the best time, October 31st, Halloween, is because the veil between the worlds is the thinnest. It's easier to connect with the ancestors our friends on the other side, the deities. I do it every Halloween. I I, um, I set out offerings for several deities like Baron Samini, Mama Bridget, 
and my Santissima Morte. Uh, graveyard deities. Those who sit at the, the, the uh, crossroads between the dead and the living. It has nothing to do with no devil's holiday. I actually heard my mother say that recently. She said, oh, you won't celebrate Christmas, but you'll celebrate the devil's holiday. And for my mother to be her age and to still think that way, it, it, it just kind of broke my heart to hear her say that. I'm like, just because you were brought up in a tradition don't mean you have to stay there. You're not honoring anybody. I mean, you're not doing some kind of good deed just because you're you're staying in the same tradition and beliefs that you were brought up in. I was brought up Catholic. I said this before. I'm so glad that I was of the presence of mind at the age of 13 to break out of that stupid shit. Because it's stupid. It's stupid and they have you worshiping Caucasians. We won't go into that. My thing was celebrate Halloween. Honor your ancestors. You should honor them all the time anyway, but this is the best time to do it. There's a book out called uh, The Book of Halloween by, I can't remember the first name, but the last name is Kelly. I suggest reading that book. It gives you a lot of insight into this day. And one more time, the lusting for results invokes the law of reverse. You won't get anywhere trying to force results with your mind. You'll do the exact opposite. Any occult products, once again, that you're in need of or you think that um, that you may want, you can always visit my store. www.themagicalelitesupplyshop.com Hopefully, uh, this video has given you some insight on invoking the law of reverse slash lusting for results. Don't do it. This is Magic of Pie. I'm signing out for now. Hope you all have a wonderful day. Give you much love. Many peace and blessings to you. Peace.